So the problem here is to circle the stronger nucleophile. We want to know which of these would be the stronger nucleophile. You can go through this together. I just want to show you how you can use the handout to solve this. Let's take a look at page two of the handout. Okay. Now, which are the atoms that we're comparing here? Which, which are going to be the nucleophilic atoms? The nitrogen and the oxygen. That's right. Neutral oxygen and neutral uh, nitrogen. Now, which table should we use here? Are we comparing the same element or different elements? Well, we're comparing two different elements. We're comparing an oxygen and a nitrogen. Two different elements. Now, we have to decide if they're in the same row or the same column of the periodic table. Same row. Same row. So what's the big difference to focus on when things are in the same row? The electronegativity. Mm -hmm. Well, who's more electronegative? The oxygen. Does that mean that the oxygen wants to gain or get rid of electrons? Electronegative things want to hold on to their electrons. Would that make this a good nucleophile or a poor nucleophile? Relatively speaking, being more electronegative, a nucleophile is somebody who wants to be at the tail of an arrow and get rid of electrons. So this would tend to be a poor nucleophile, or at least relatively poor, compared to the nitrogen, which is all we care about. A poorer nucleophile, because it's so electronegative, it doesn't want to get rid of its electrons. Let's see if the table would confirm that for us. Uh, less electronegative makes you a better nucleophile you're more willing to donate electrons. That means more electronegative makes you a poorer nucleophile. So this is how we would determine this. So what was the answer? Who's the stronger nucleophile? The, uh, the amine. Is that what it is? Yeah, that's good. That's the right name. The nitrogen container is the stronger nucleophile. Good. How about? Let's determine which of these is the better nucleophile. So who would be our nucleophilic atoms here? Um, in the N, the neutral nitrogen and the neutral chlorine. Because they both have lone pairs. So let's use that table to figure out which of these would be the better nucleophile. The uh, nitrogen. Because? Because um, the fluorine is the most electronegative uh, element. Right. That's right. Although, what are we focusing on mainly here? Size or electronegativity? We're mainly focusing on electronegativity because these are in the same row. When things are in the same row, you mainly focus on the electronegativity. Well, that would tend to make this um, a bad nucleophile. In fact, you already know that we never use this like a nucleophile. Well, that, this is not really nucleophilic at all, and the reason is it's so electronegative. It's so electronegative, we would not use this as a nucleophile. That's right. Maybe this was kind of a weird example even to come up with. Now how about let's figure out which of these is the better nucleophile. So that analysis sounded good. Now, how did you know to focus on size here and not electronegativity? Because they are in the same column. That's right. The handout tells us that when things are in the same column, the most important difference is their size, not their electronegativity. Well, this is bigger. And are bigger things better or worse nucleophiles? Bigger things are uh, better nucleophiles. The reason you gave for that made some sense, although that's not the, uh, the reason I have here in the handout. But I think your reason kind of makes sense, too. 
He said a bigger thing would tend to have less hold on its electrons. Roughly speaking, that's correct. The way an organic chemist would say that is bigger things are more polarizable. But that's actually pretty much the logic you were getting at, so that was good. These are also less hindered by the solvent, because it's harder to form a solvation shell. But for whatever reason, bigger things tend to be better nucleophiles. There are some exceptions to this trend, but I don't think that would be tested anymore in your class. So for the most part in your class, bigger means a better nucleophile. I think I actually said in the handout, usually, right? Yeah, bigger usually means a better nucleophile. It can depend a little bit on the solvent, but at this point, I don't think your course would ever go into those details. We can just trust that bigger means a better nucleophile. All right, well, anyway, um, I guess we'll, we'll wrap up with that. Now we've seen how to compare the nucleophilicity when things are in the same row or the same column. Um, you have to know when to focus on the electronegativity and when to focus on the size. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype, and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.